Sunday. Let us continue to pray for congregation and pastor. As you said at the beginning of the service, the whole nation needs prayer. Amen. You can never get too much of it. Good to be back again. Uh, enjoyed you on last Sunday. And we'll be expecting to be here next Sunday, the next couple of Sundays, I know. Uh, on the for the notice, uh, uh, we do uh, hope and pray that Pastor recovers real soon and be back. Amen. If the Lord will. Really enjoy being with you. You know, today is LWML Sunday, and today we want to uh, dedicate the whole service to the LWML. Of the church and of our nation. And, uh, let us pray. Now may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord. This day we pray, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. Our subject for all today is Kingdom People Produce Kingdom Fruit. Kingdom people produce kingdom fruit. And our text is part of our Holy Gospel that was read earlier. St. Matthew, the 21st chapter, verses 43 through 45. And they took him and threw him out of the vineyard and killed him. When therefore the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those tenants? They said to him, he will put those wretches to a miserable death and let out the vineyard to other tenants who will give him the fruits of their season. Jesus said to them, have you never read in scripture the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. This was the Lord's doing, and it's marvelous in our eyes. Therefore I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to the people producing its fruit. And the one who falls on this stone will be broken to pieces. And when it falls on anyone, it will crush him. Uh, here in it, the reading of our text, taking a uh, special notice upon the 43rd verse of, of our text there. Kingdom people produce kingdom fruit. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and Lord Jesus Christ. In 1998, the National Youth Gathering of the Lutheran Church, Missouri Senate, was held in Atlanta, Georgia. When one travels to Atlanta, one cannot help but notice the name of one of the main streets running through the city is Peachtree Street. In the southern Atlanta metro area, one will also find Peachtree City. Of course, finding a street and a city in Georgia with the names should be a no great surprise to anyone who knows anything about Georgia. After all, Georgia is well known for the delicious peaches that the state people produce. Thus, it is known as the Peach State. However, Georgia is not unique in being known for its production of a particular fruit. For example, if one were to think of the state of Washington, one would most likely think of apples. Similarly, a mention of Florida would bring oranges to mind. 
and in fact all 50 of the United States have an official fruit associated with their state. Ranging from pears to blueberries to strawberries, even huckleberries. The point is that each state is known for the fruit that its people produce. Just as states are known by the fruit each produce, the kingdom of God is recognized by the fruit its people produce. Of course, this fruit is different than that which is found on the common branches of vine. Kingdom people produce kingdom fruit. The production of the kingdom fruit is a very special task to kingdom people by the Almighty God. The importance of this task cannot be overstressed especially when one considers the task has been taken away from others who failed at its production. That is what is taught in the Gospel reading, appointed for today, from Matthew the 21st chapter. Let's take a closer look again at this Word of God. The context of this reading is provided in Matthew 21, 23, which reads, when Jesus entered the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came up to him as he was teaching and said, By what authority are you doing these things? And who gave you this authority? Jesus addressed this immediate question by replying, verses 24 through 27. Jesus answered them, I will ask you one question, and if you tell me the answer, then I will tell you by what authority I do these things. The baptism of John, from where did it come? From heaven or from man? And they discussed it among themselves, saying, If we say from heaven, he will say to us, Why then did you not believe him? But if we say for man, we are afraid of the crowd, for they all hold that John was a prophet. So they answered Jesus, we do not know. And he said to them, neither will I tell you by what authority I do these things. In this context, Jesus teaches the lesson of our gospel reading, which was directed at their refusal to acknowledge and believe in him as the promised Messiah. He teaches in the parable as follows. There was a man, there was a master of a house who planted a vineyard and put a fence around it and dug a wine press in it and built a tower and leased it to tenants and went into another country. When the season of fruit draw near, he uh, sent his servants to the tenant to get his fruit. And the tenant took his servants and beat one, killed another one, and stoned another. Again, he sent other servants, more than the first, and they did the same to them. Finally, he sent his son to them, saying, they will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him and have his inheritance. And they took him and threw him out of the vineyard and killed him. When therefore the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those tenants? They said to him, he will put those wretches to a miserable death and let out the vineyard to other tenants who would give him the fruit in their seed. Jesus said, have you ever read in scripture the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone? This was the Lord's doing. 
and it is marvelous in our eyes. Therefore I tell you the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people producing its fruit. And the one who falls on this throne will be broken to pieces. And when it falls on anyone, it will curse him. Further, the gospel reader records in Matthew, the 21st chapter and the 45th verse, when the chief priests and the Pharisees heard his parable, they perceived that he was speaking about them. Their perception was correct. The chief priests and the Pharisees had not been producing kingdom fruit. Now they were rejecting the very Son of God and would be the one who would be responsible for his death. They were following the pattern of their forefathers who had rejected the prophets and their message, which prophetic message was now being fulfilled in Jesus. The result of their actions was stated very clearly and emphatically by Jesus. He stated in no uncertain terms, therefore I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people producing its fruits. These words of rejection spoken to those who denied Jesus also carried special emphasis for those being given the kingdom of God. The emphasis of his message is just as strong to the new tenants, simply stated, the kingdom of God will be given to a people producing its fruit. What does this mean? Fruit production is expected of kingdom people. Or as the theme of this message states, Kingdom people produce kingdom fruit. Through the word and sacrament, by God's grace in Christ Jesus, we are made the new people of the kingdom. We truly did not deserve his honored position. As the scriptures declare, we were enemies of God. But in this state, God reconciled us to himself. As the Apostle Paul wrote to the church at Rome, while we were sinners, we were reconciled to God by the death of his son, Romans 5, 10, 8, through the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. We receive this reconciliation through the forgiveness of sin in the waters of baptism. Sins are washed away and faith is given. By faith, you see, we believe in Jesus as the Son of God. By faith, then we are tenants of God's kingdom. By faith, then we bear fruit for the kingdom. This is in accord with the word of the Apostle Paul to the Romans, where he wrote, Likewise, my brothers, you also have died to the law through the body of Christ, so that you may belong to another, to him who has been raised from the dead, in order that we may bear fruit for God. Romans 7, 4. Let there be no doubt to be kingdom people is a gift. The words of Jesus are clear. The kingdom of God is given. At the same time, let it be equally understood. The production of the kingdom fruit is the expectation of God's kingdom people. As Jesus taught in the parable, the master will let out the vineyard to other tenants who will give him fruit in their season. This is not a new expectation for kingdom people. It was declared old by the prophets, as recorded in Isaiah, the fifth chapter. My beloved had a vineyard on a fertile hill, 
He dug it and cleared it of the stone and planted it with choice vine. He built the watchtower in the midst of it and hewed out a wine vat in it. And he looked for it to yield grapes, but it yielded wild grapes. God expects good fruit from his people. The message of John the Baptist was equally clear. Bear fruit in keeping with repentance. As people of the kingdom, we are in a new state, not a state of the union, rather a state of righteousness, a state of the kingdom of God. In this new state, the production of our sanctified lives is kingdom fruit recognized through fruits of righteousness, namely repentance, faith, works of faith, and in the making of disciples. The good news is that we are not left to this task without our almighty God's help. As people of the kingdom of God, God graciously nurtures us and generously gives us everything we need to produce fruit for the kingdom. The words from verse 33 of the gospel reading remind us of what the master has done. The master has planted a vineyard and put a fence around it and dug a wine press in it and built a tower. All this he did before turning over the vineyard to the tenants. The master supplied everything the tenants needed to produce fruit. The same is true today. The Lord supplies all we need. The Holy Spirit calls us by the gospel and enlightens us with his gifts. We are connected to Jesus, who in our life mind for bearing fruit. This is the message in John chapter 15, Jesus said, I am the vine and you are the branch. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit. John 15a through 16b. He empowers us also through the word and sacrament for this very purpose, being fully nurtured by God, we walk in manner worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him, bearing fruit in every good work. The question is, as stated in the Lutheran study Bible related to Isaiah, the fifth chapter, does the fruit of your service match the generosity of his nurture. As Jesus declared, everyone to whom much was given of him will much be required. And from him to whom they entrusted much, they will demand the more. God has been abundantly generous to his people. We like nothing for the work of his king. Yet we all too often find ourselves making excuses instead of producing fruit. We will fall into the trap of the original tenants in the parable. We believe that what we possess is ours. Meanwhile, the psalmist reminds us the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. We have the warning of what happens to those who do not respond to his generosity. Those who reject his work, those who reject his son, and those who do not produce, the kingdom will be taken away. Therefore, with repentant heart and forgiven lives, we do well to heed the words of Colossians, the third chapter and the 17th verse. Whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name 
of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him for those to whom the kingdom has been given. It is fruit production season. This is what kingdom people do. By God's grace, this is what the Lutheran women missionary lead, the LFWML does. It is well known for its emphasis on fruit production as expressed in its pledge, in fervent gratitude for the Savior's dying love and his blood bought gift of redemption. We dedicate ourselves to him with all that we are and have, and in obedience to his call for workers in the harvest field, we pledge him our willing service wherever and whenever he has need of us. We consecrate to our Savior our hands to work for him, our feet to go on his errand, our voice to sing his praise, our lips to proclaim his redeeming love, our silver and our gold to extend his kingdom, our will to do his will, and every power of our life to the great task of bringing the Lord, of bringing the lost and the error into eternal fellowship, amen, from churches to community, to the world. These Lutheran women in mission are well known for gathering mites for mission grants in their home district and the global work abroad. The hands-on labor expands from congregation to community and around the world. The LWMF is a blessing to many. Kingdom people produce kingdom fruit, fit well the description of their purpose and their mission. In the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus said, every healthy tree bears good fruit. As followers of Jesus, God makes us healthy in Christ. We are in the right state, namely his kingdom. We are in the right season, the fruit producing season. So kingdom people produce kingdom fruit. Therefore, the fruits of repentance, faith, and works of faith. Go make disciples. May the kingdom of God be recognized by our fruit. To God alone be the glory. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now let us stand. Now may the peace of God that passes all understanding keep our hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. You may be seated.